So, you know, short-term interest rate moved a lot in the last six months, and they'll probably still go a bit higher and stay there. Uh, you know, consumer took a lot of debt. Interest, mm -hmm. interest rates went up. Um, consumer was resilience, uh, resilient, and, and that was a sort of our thesis last year that corporate and consumers are very resilient. But as the time progresses, they're less and less resilient. So we do think that we will uh, have a recession. The question is whether it's a mild or less mild, uh, both here in the U.S. and in Europe. So sort of as the time passes, we think that fundamentals are deteriorating, you know, and the market has been moving up, you know, like so that has to clash at some point. Yeah, it feels almost like investors just are hoping that things won't be as bad, mm -hmm. the recession will be mild. We've heard that time and time mm -hmm. again from CEOs at this point saying, you know what, we don't see things as being that bad. It's almost like people want to be lazy long at this mm -hmm. point. I mean, how would you characterize the market action yourself? It's, it's a little bit like that. So there is a little bit of sort of... Uh, um, a, a, a technical move higher, you know, like the trend followers started covering shorts, adding some longs. Volatility, VIX declined a lot, below 20. So declining VIX usually brings some inflows, some systematic, some discretionary. You know, then people start believing in narratives that things will be better. We have a China, which gives a little bit of a sentiment. Dollar is weaker. So I think that created this narrative that kind of worse is behind us. Kind of recession is over. Or recession happened some, somehow magically last year, and now we're about to grow, which, which we don't agree. We see, actually, if you look at all of these data, like I send the regional surveys like Empire, Philly, uh, Richmond, they're all kind of going lower. So m for me, the question is, what's going to make this survey turn up, you know, these, these data points turn up, you know, and, and, and I don't see that happening un unless Fed cuts. And Fed doesn't have an intention to cut now, you know, so I do think things have to get worse before they get better. Mm. So the VIX, it, mm -hmm. I'm puzzled at a 20 mm -hmm. VIX here, so mm -hmm. I, I hear you on that. But y you often cite investor positioning. You guys mm -hmm. are great at this. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, there's a lot of cash out there. There's also, you know, if you look at the economy, and this is a different metric, but you've got 2.6 trillion yeah. in new China savings that yeah. you know, suddenly could get unleashed. No, th that's what makes it tough, right? Because positioning is not that high, you know? And, th and that's a bullish argument, you know? And that's an argument that we kind of used extensively last yeah. year and didn't kind of save us. Position was, was low already in June, July last year, and we yep. still went to lows, you know, like so. But I agree, if on a positive side, positioning is not that high, and that's, I think, it makes it difficult. That's why it makes it painful, and market kind of drifts higher, because there is a little bit of that positioning pain or, or a ability to re-rate as the volatility comes down, you know. But overall, we do think the direction of economy is south, you know, and, and at some point that will have to, you know, corporate CEO may say, like, things look fine now, but are they going to be fine in three, six, or nine months? Mm -hmm. And market should look a little bit ahead of that. Marco, what's the math around earnings for this? I think Mike Wilson, his low end's 180. You're starting to see mm -hmm. more and more people ratchet mm -hmm. down their S&P mm -hmm. 500 numbers. What are yours? So, look, we are at 205. It's, it's, it's a tricky, right? So if we are at 205, which sort of prices in mild recession, right? So now if there is no recession, which, again, we don't think that that's the case, but if there is no recession, it's probably <clears> 225, 230. If there is a recession, it could be more along what Mike is saying. It could be another, you know, 10% lower, so call it 180, 190. So we are, we are sort of in between, you know. Uh, so very mild recession, that's what we are pricing in. Now, we can be wrong both ways. It can be worse or it can be a bit better if we avoid recession. But we do uh, think it's 200 and then 205, and then multiple is, is a little bit high now, mm -hmm. given that the Fed is still moving higher. It doesn't sound like your, your PE matches with what you foresee for the economy, though. I mean, if you, if you say the 205 reflects a mild mm -hmm. recession and the indicators that you take a look at mm -hmm. indicate that anything, everything's going to go south mm -hmm. even more, that doesn't say, say to me mild. Yeah, it, it, you, you're right. You know, like, so that's why what we are projecting, and it, and it, it is a little bit convoluted. So we think things first turn south, get much worse, then Fed quickly cuts you know, or, or reacts or, 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 or signals cutting, and that basically inflects us higher, you know, like, so, so we still are hoping that there's going to be some backstop in, in the, in the uh, you know, so when you look at all these data kind of rolling off, like, yeah, if, if, if they're left unchecked at 5% plus interest rates, it would be much worse, more along the lines what some of our competitors are saying, but we think at some point they'll, they'll backstop it, you know, like, so the big question is where, is it 3,600, 3,400, 3,200, sort of, we don't have a very strong conviction, but we do think lower is the direction. Right. Marco, when you think of your 205 mm -hmm. S&P for, for this year, I mean, think about these large multinationals make up mm -hmm. a big part of that, right? And so right now we're waiting for Microsoft's guidance right mm -hmm. here. And so what are the incentives, especially with the dollar that you just mm -hmm. mentioned that's so weak? And that was mm -hmm. one of the reasons why they warned, let's say, six to nine months ago. Um, do they have any incentives, these major companies, just, just to inch it out, like quarter by quarter, rather than just kind of take big cuts? 
So that could be a path that we basically we just gradually deflate, get rid of some of the excesses, the dollar stays a, a, a tailwind at these lower levels. Uh, so that's this sort of a soft landing scenario where, whereby consumer can kind of, you know, still, still, still survive next call, it's 6 to 12 months, you know. It's, it's possible. It's a risk to our base case scenario. You know, I happen to think that, you know, there is usually some uh, contagion or something that happens unexpected, you know, um, one thing leads to another, and market a little bit kind of front runs all of those developments. So I, I think it's less likely that you have this type of very soft, gradual, range-bound market until we are ready to rally, let's say, in 2024. You know, so it, it's possible. In that case, we are not going to be right. But fundamental to your turnaround is the, is the idea that the Fed will flinch. In some way, ultimately, the yes. Fed will just back it's, down and give in to the markets. That, that's what my view, and, yeah. and again, you remember, you know, 475 or 5 or 525, I don't think there's too much of a difference, actually. But last time we had this type of rates were in 2007, you know, and, and, and then they went to zero after that, right? So, so I just don't think that 5% rate, we can have this economy functioning and the financial markets and all the changes that happen in, in the markets, be it leverage in the markets, be it private asset classes, ventures, venture capital, private equity, all those things. I don't think they can coexist at 5% long term. So I think something will have to give and Fed will need to flinch.